Las Vegas and in the States and everything. Why did you decide to have a, a, Euro, a European tour? Uh, well, you know, I don't know. It went through my mind. I said, huh, you know, America, Europe. You know, they always hang out together, you know, as America as Europe. So they've been hanging, you know, World War One, World War Two. They always hanging out. So I figure I better go on and hang with the other part. So, yeah, here I am. Yes. So the public is different in the United States? Do they do they answer differently to your jokes? Do you, did you see a, a, a difference? Did you adapt your show to, to Europe? Did you? I didn't see a difference. You know, the only difference I've seen is that the European audience is more tentative. You know, in, in America, um, they see us constantly. You know what I mean? Whereas in Europe, you know, it's like my first time here in Romania, first time in Germany last night. Mm -hmm. And um, they're very attentive, you know, they're, you can tell a story with a European audience. Whereas in America, get to it, baby, get to it, baby, feed me, I need oh, the joke, need I need the joke, right now, right now, right now. Whereas here, you can really take them somewhere and, you know, go on and enjoy the canvas of the human mind and, you know, pull out the brushes and stroke them. And they're right there with you, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah. But when they laugh, they laugh hearty. Here. Even in Germany, because they're known to be a little bit cold. Them Germans wasn't cold, they was hot. Yeah, they stood up going nuts, and there's one fool of it, uh, um, they uh, kept asking uh, some stupid question that didn't make no sense. But anyway, I had fun, uh, you know, with the banter back and forth with him. And I think he had one brain cell and it was stuck on stupid. So, well, we had fun. Yes. So your show is interactive? Of course. Yes. And the Romanians, do you, did you feel the pulse of the Romanians or not yet? You don't know anything about them at all? Not a thing. <laughs> really? Only thing I know about Romanians is right, right, right now, right. sitting in this room. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so far, so good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. You were so you voted know. class clown when you were never and cool when you were when was the, the exact moment when you knew that you were going to make a living out of comedy? Out of comedy? Yeah. I was at birth. The doctor smacked me on the ass, and I said, motherfucker, what's your problem? You freak. You understand me? Uh, no, what, what really happened, <laughs> it was, no one's going to make money at it. Yeah, sure. Like, I'm not going to start to death just telling jokes. Right. It's going to be my job. <laughs> I think it was, uh, the first show, um, my cousin had bet me $50 that I wouldn't get on stage. And uh, I told him you're exactly right, because I've never been on stage talking, you know. I was in a band, you know, I've been on stage with a band, dancing, and so on and so forth, but never. So uh, we sat there and I had a couple of drinks. And uh, after, you know, courage in a bottle, I went on that stage and took his fifty dollars, and at that moment right there, I said, "This is it." Yes. Is there anything you're afraid before you go on stage that people are not going to answer to your jokes? Is there anything you fear, or you just go there? I just go there. No, I don't write them. You don't write them. I have never written a joke in my life. It just comes. You just go. Oh, so you just go with the flow? Yeah. <laughs> You don't have a specific topic. You don't have a. I have topics like, you know, I'm going to do politics, you know. Or, you know, I might bounce in my head. Hey, let's talk about religion, you know. Let's talk about relationships, you know. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then whatever's in there, you know, you just squeeze it out. Mm -hmm. huh. Is there a specific topic you would never joke about? Ha! There is no such thing as taboo. You talk about everything, because in life there is everything. So how the fuck are you going to get on stage and lie and, you know, lead this part of your life out? It's bullshit. So, yes, I will talk about anything and everything. Now. What would you say to the people who don't get your jokes? Well, aside from F you, <laughs> you don't get my jokes. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. I would say thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, if they don't get it, you know, gives me a chance to 
dig a little deeper until I get them. So you talk to the people. Who don't I'm get on them. stage. I'm looking at the face of the angriest son of a bitch in there. Because if I get him, I got everybody else. Okay. Did you ever get in trouble because you had a smart mouth? Yes, of course. I still get in trouble. <laughs> when was the last time you got in trouble because of that? And how did you get out of it? Uh, <clears throat> Well, uh, you know, uh, the mouth uh, tends to uh, do things. You know, I don't have a filter. You know, some people have a filter and they think before they talk. I don't have that problem. Whatever in there just flies the fuck out. And, uh, you know, it tends to get you in uh, situations. <laughs> so the last situation you got into? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, my mother was over visiting and, uh, you know, she was hanging with the grandbabies and I was just thinking to myself, out loud, of course, uh, you know, I'd like to make sure they're alive when I get home. Oh, shit. She said, what'd you say? I said, well, you know, when we were kids and you'd give us a whooping, you know, I was half dead every time. I was just wondering if mine was going to be alive when I get home. It was kind of a joke. Ha <laughs> ha. So that's how I got out of that. Yes. Did the fact that you get into the movie business, you said you don't have a filter, but did this make you have a filter? Because they have, this is take one, this is no, take two. No, two different businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, stand up is just uh, you, the microphone, and the audience, the transfer of energy is give and take, you know, instant gratification or instant oh shit. Um, whereas in the movie, you're, you're, you're reading somebody else's words, right? And, you know, so this is acting. You have to become a character, this, that, and the other. You know, I try to give every character I play a background, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, take them back at least 10 years so that way when you're in the scene, you haven't, you know this guy, you know what his mother was like, you know, what his uh, childhood was like, and you know, it gives more depth to the character. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a totally different energy when, you, when you're acting than stand-up. And when you work on movies, do you still do stand-up or you don't have to? Most definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. so if I have a day off, I will be on the stage, yes. Like, like, Do you improvise in the movies? Are you allowed? Damn straight, baby. Yes. Hell yeah. Yeah. And you don't have quarrels with the director, like what? No, you we get cool. Hands on to the script. Hands on to the script. Well, that, that's an insecure director. <laughs> okay. Right? But if you truly have a director that um, trusts his actors, which is why you chose your actors, um, they always is always like, okay, do it this way. Now, one for fun and then he trusts the artist to go on and paint the picture. And then if it's good, he's like, let's do another one. Just like that. So that's, it's, it's gotta be a give and take. If you got this taskmaster, ah, oh, you do it the way that I do it or you don't do it, then fuck you, you go and act your goddamn self. You know what I'm saying? And then you walk off the set and let the motherfucker put a wig on and he can play the character too. So. Did you ever walk off a set because you didn't like the people you worked with? No. Do you, do you get to pick the people you work with, or do you get to just try to like them? <laughs> no, no, I've, I've, I've been very lucky. I've picked uh, quite a few people that I work with, yeah. Mm -hmm. And along with the fame, did things become more difficult, or did they become easier to deal with? What things? What in, in Like the fact that you have more shows than you used to have, do you still find it easy to find the happiness of going on stage or is it More shows you? than I used yeah, to have? Yeah. I don't know. I've been working damn near every day when I started. Mm -hmm. It's not more shows, just bigger. Yeah. And in different locations. Yeah. And that's different? That's that's hard. is it hard for Hell you? Hell no. What's hard about this? Look at this shit. Mm -hmm. I'm chilling, I got this pretty woman over here, I got another one over here with some titties, you know what I mean, just typing away. Don't show them. God made them. I did show them. All right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, if one hour before the show you get really bad news or you're in a bad mood, what do you do to just move along and do your show? Uh, you, you, you take that on stage with you. 
you don't cover it. You just no. You have to be brutally honest up there in order for it to be real and and most effective. If you're in a bad mood, you, you get on stage. You start out in a bad mood because your energy is honest. Mm -hmm. And then you and the audience together can come out of that shit. Mm -hmm. so that's how. You know, that's how I do it. Yeah. What's the nicest thing a person in the audience ever told you? Hmm. What's the nicest shit we done heard since we've been here in Europe? Come back. Oh, yeah, I get that all the time. Uh, glad you came. Glad you came. What took you so long? Some of that shit. Yeah, what yeah. took you so long? Exactly. Uh, well, you know, uh, only thing that uh, took this long is, is uh, 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 promoters. And, you know, this young man here had the galls and the balls to say, yes, uh, bring that little black motherfucker over here. So, and then uh, since we were going to do the European leg of the, the Living Legend Tour, I said, cool. Romanians, like, have you ever been? I said, no. I said, is there any black people there? Oh, that's what I noticed. I haven't seen a nigga since I've been here. <laughs> you know, I was looking, too. I'm like, where the motherfuckers at? I'm like, not one. So, you know, hopefully we'll see, uh, you know, some Africans or something <laughs> come out. They are, they are. Okay. They I know. usually get married with Romanians. Yeah, I know, yeah. They love the Romanians. Who don't? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Yeah, some Diddy feed the native, boy. Yeah, it look like a booty on the chest, I'm telling you. <laughs> yes. And what's the worst thing somebody in your audience ever told you? Um... You should get off the stage and never come back? No, it was way worse than that. Uh, <laughs> that was verbal. You ever been on stage and a motherfucker start shooting? No. Uh, welcome to America. Yes, um, that was the wildest show. That was in L.A. This was like 92, 93. And I'm on stage. They got the spotlight in front of you, right? So I can't see shit, and I just hear. So I'm like, damn, that joke went over good, right? I tilt the hat, them motherfuckers out there fighting, they shooting in the motherfucker. I did laid down comedy. <laughs> Ain't bullshit, it wasn't stand up, I did laid down. I kept telling jokes though. Telling jokes, the audience is on the floor. We all stayed laid on the goddamn floor till the police showed up. And the police came in and they said, you really are a funny, crazy motherfucker to sit up here and do laid down comedy. I said, well, what the fuck I'm gonna get up for and run? I could catch a bullet, just lay down. And do your job. And do, yeah. <laughs> Great. Damn. For you, who's the god of comedy? Hmm? You're, you're a god of comedy. Who's the god of comedy? Who's the god? Well, the top. Well. Besides myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would be Richard Pryor. Mm -hmm. Yes. If James Brown is the godfather of soul, then Richard Pryor is the godfather of comedy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Greatest that ever did. Mm -hmm. wow, As a matter of fact, we did a, a evening for Richard Pryor uh, to raise funds in Peoria, Illinois. This is two weeks ago. Uh, it's Richard Pryor's birth town. And uh, we raised the funds. To, they're putting up a seven and a half foot tall bronze statue of Richard Pryor, and you're entering Peoria, Illinois. And it was me, George Lopez. Cedric the Entertainer, D.L. Hughley, Mike Epps, and Charlie Murphy. And um, that tour will start taking off next year. Because we're going to take the whole thing on tour. And you're going to come back again? Yes. Oh, baby, I'll be here. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You crazy? Shit. Sure. Great. And uh, the proceeds from the show goes to the Richard Pryor Foundation. Oh, that's yes. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. To help out the children. Yes. Great.